This is a can crusher. We're going to use um, LaCroix's key lime. We're gonna, there's a little liquid, so we're going to put it upside down so it can't spill when we crush it. You just set it in here like this. Put it like this. Now this isn't mounted to anything, so what we're going to do is we're going to use a foot pressure to crush the can like that. And you can see when we open it, the can self seals because the flap comes back up and it's crushed to about an inch. Careful because there's sharp edges on some of the crushed cans. And special thanks to the Aluminum Can Compactor Company who sent this wonderfully made, very durable, heavy duty steel can crusher that can accommodate up to 16 ounce cans, though we don't have any to test. You can see the mechanism, how it works like this. And that's what does the we compaction. Do, we do have 16 ounce cans. So here we can see the forge operating. And what we have is a bunch of smashed aluminum cans from that previous operation and unit. And this is the setup. I've got two insulating bricks to protect the garage floor. And you're going to see me sequentially load using these heavy duty stainless steel tongs. We're going to load recycled aluminum beverage cans of different kind that Meg and I collect, uh, both from the LaCroix La drinks that we drink and from people we work with, our friends and family and co-workers. And you see the process of loading the cans into the forge like this, which is followed by an incandescent orange red flame coming out. And that's because the fuel air mixture richens up as flammable components painted onto the can for the label actually boil off and become part of the combustion. I actually turn the propane down when loading it and then turn it back up once it's firing. Here we see those incandescent flames. The pop can labels are still burning off. I'm going to fix that later with the cool tech. So you can tell when I add pop cans, the labels and the other volatiles, like the plastic liner or the parts of the outside, all the non-aluminum parts, watch when I drop one in, it starts to burn off and it makes kind of a sooty yellow flame like that. This, um, this produces a lot of soot and smoke and particulate. So what we're going to do is put a two inch automotive aftermarket three-way catalytic converter into the lid and then I'm going to be more judicious to load the aluminum and then restore the lid quickly can by can so that a lot of the pollutants carbon monoxide soot and other nasty air pollutants will be catalytically reduced in the aftermarket catalytic converter. But for now, I did it with the garage door up and I let the garage stay open for more than an hour and it really wasn't that bad. Um, a carbon filtering mask is the trick to not breathing this gunk. Make sure to wear heat resistant gloves like you see me doing. So we see here that as the combustion continues, the flame exiting the vent hole at the top of the forge will transition from an incandescent soot yellow and orange color to a more optically clear blue color, and that indicates more complete hotter combustion. This is exactly the 1000 centigrade temperature range we need to get the catalytic converter to work, and in an upcoming video, you'll see that. Thanks for watching, friends. Please give this video a like, consider subscribing, and Godspeed and blessings to you, friends. Good luck with life. Hope you enjoy your metal forge if you have one.